Clint. It's clean. Hello. It's not Clint. Hey, y'all. So I wanted to hop on here real quick to give y'all some encouragement because I feel like sometimes um, we need to hear this. I know I needed to hear it. I was having a conversation and I was like, some days I just want to know, am I delusional with what God shows me? So I wanted to hop on here and tell you that your labor of devotion, of diligence, of being faithful, of believing God and taking God at his word is not in vain. It's not in vain. I was watching, I was supposed to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma this weekend. But she has to go to Houston. Yeah, I was supposed to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma at Mike Todd's um, grand opening at his church. One of my friends from church, we were going to drive up together and go. But I got to go to Houston. I'm leaving for Houston tonight. And so I did not get a chance to go. But I was watching Mike Todd. And I was watching um, just the history of how Mike Todd got to where he is with Transformation Church. If you guys are not familiar with Mike Todd. Go get familiar. Go get familiar. That's what Chloe said, right? Go get familiar. Go on YouTube, watch Transformation Church, follow him. I am Mike Todd, M-I-K-E Todd on um, Instagram. Watch his Insta stories. Do what you can to watch whatever you can, but um, go get familiar. But they just did a grand opening where they moved their church into an arena, another sports arena. So they're the second church to do this, similar to Joel Osteen. And they opened up their church. They did a grand opening yesterday. And I've been following him uh, for quite some time. But I watched the story where he talked about where they were when they were believing for this. They actually believed for it five years ago. And... Um, when they were believing for it, they didn't have the staff, they didn't have the money, they didn't have anything. They just had the vision. And they were willing to do the work. They was just like, I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know what is going to happen to get us in the arena, but we're going to be in the arena. God said we're going to be in the arena, we're going to be in the arena. And they just were diligent at staying consistent and doing the work that God had called them to do. And here they are. They had the grand opening. People came in from all over the world to come to their grand opening. This young man, I think Mike Todd is either 32 or 35 years old. And he is um, just on fire for God. Just bold. Uh, such a new now generation, fresh breath of fresh air for this generation. Um, and And people are connected to his approach to really teaching God's word like the dude is just he understands real life right he's not trying to fabricate or holy cake whatever the word is like be so holier than thou um that you know people don't feel connected but it's probably for the first time not for the first time but one of the few times in this generation where you've seen a pastor that is really pulling in so many people from all walks of life that just get it, right? So as I'm watching Pastor Todd, me and my husband had a conversation this morning because guys, listen, I believe that we're spirit beings having a human experience. We're not human beings having a spirit experience. So everything that I do, I think in the spirit realm, right? I think I, I, I really do live, I live with the intentions to expect the supernatural in my life. But your reality don't always line up to what you would, you know, you see, right? Where you are right now in your current life may not look like where it is that God is showing you in your vision. And I talked about that a few minutes ago when I talked about, um, you know, don't be ashamed of your transition, right? Because a lot of times God will show you something that it, it looks impossible. It makes absolutely no sense. Nothing adds up. Nothing lines up. There's no way to understand how, right? You just It just makes no sense. But God has a way of, one. He, he, number one, he does everything for his glory, right? It's like he wants to use our lives as an opportunity to show others the power of the glory of God when we give God permission to operate in and through us. He wants people to witness these miracles in our life. And so when we surrender and we understand God's vision, like when God gives us a vision and we say we're going to walk in that vision, what we're doing is we're creating a strategic partnership with God saying, you got full reign to show out, to show off, to make the miracles 
po you know, tur to turn the impossible possible and to manifest miracles in my life and actually use me as a story, as a testimony, as living proof of what's possible, right? So we give God permission to, to you know, show off through us is, is essentially what happens when we, when we operate in the fullness of what God has called us to operate in. But I want y'all to understand, because see, I see a lot of people post up saying, God about to do something amazing in your life and things about to happen in your life that ain't never happened before and blah, blah, blah. But here's what many of us don't, don't realize. It, God can bless you according to your belief system, right? He can bless you according, he blesses you according to your belief. That's why there's a scripture that says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Because the only way that God can help you, there's a scripture that I posted the other day, um, from Joe Osteen, I, I do his devotional every day. And it was a scripture that said that a man came to, he went to Jesus asking for healing, but Jesus could not heal him because the guy did not believe. He just didn't believe. So Jesus couldn't heal him. It was just like, I can't force you to believe, you know, what I can produce. Like that, he gives us free will. And so we have to maintain that level of belief and know that what we're doing is not in vain. It's it's, it's like the kingdom of God is backwards, y'all. The kingdom of God is very backwards. And it's very hard in this day and age to stay plugged in and stay connected sometimes to... Um, <laughs> Chloe be like, Mama, you be shouting when you talking. Hey, guys, Nicole Cooper <laughs> here today. I'll be talking about Jesus. <laughs> Jesus this, oh. Jesus that. Oh, like, come on, Chloe. That's so I'm sorry, but you don't have to be, you don't have to do that. But that's what Chloe, you sound like. Chloe, please. Um, but yeah, so anyway, but the point is, is that it's understanding that the things of God will often be done backwards. It will not always make sense. And so in this day and age, it gets very hard to be able to identify like, is what I'm believing real or not? Because you can see everybody else being blessed and everybody else living their best life and everybody else operating at this certain level. And you feel like, God, I'm being loyal. I'm being faithful. I'm devoted. I'm committed. I'm doing the things you asked me to do. I do not understand why things are not lining up according to your promises, right? Like you're going to go through those processes and through those seasons, but we just got to be faithful and know that our labor is not in vain. You know, there's so many different scriptures that talk about it, but it talks about enduring, like run this great race of faith. It, it, you know, it won't, it, 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 I, I, I cannot tell y'all how many times in my life it was things that I heard prophesied over me. And I was like, never, like, how would that ever happen? And then it, in a supernatural way, things came to pass. I'll give you an example. And I'm writing a book right now. And I wrote about this in my book the other day. But I remember being in school. I was such a troubled kid. I dropped out of school in the ninth grade. I did everything wrong, right? I got kicked out of schools. I got kicked out of the doggone Los Angeles Unified School District. There was only one school in the whole school district in Los Angeles that was willing to take me because I had gotten kicked out of school on the second day of school. Now, this was a school that I had gotten kicked out of before, the year before. So I went there to school in the eighth grade, had a fight, got kicked out. I had did a lot of stuff, but the fight was the last draw. I got kicked out in the eighth grade. Then I went back, they let me back in ninth grade, right? Had a fight on the first day of school and got suspended on the second day of school and told I could never return. Then I went to another school and I had uh, gotten into a lot of trouble there. I can't believe that's my mom. And I, <laughs> the time, Chloe's talking about, I can't believe that's my mom. But I, I got in trouble at another school for all kind of stuff. I mean, I can't talk about it in front of Chloe. But they kicked me out and told me if I ever set foot on that premises again, that they were going to arrest me. Right? They told me, you you are um, you are terminated, excluded, whatever they're expelled from the campus. And if you ever set foot on this campus again, we will arrest you. I was 13 years old or 14 years old. Right? They told me if I ever set foot on that campus again, I would get arrested. I got arrested because I set foot on that campus, but this time I was I was under all kind of influences. <laughs> and my mother found me arrested to a chair when she came to get me, cussing out the police officer, right? All this stuff happening. And that's when I got kicked out of the Los Angeles Unified School District. I almost went to prison for almost throwing a girl inside of a Taco Bell window. I wanted to, <laughs> to, to, to do some bad things. 
I almost went to juvenile prison, right? But they found out that I was 13 and she was 18, so they let me go and didn't lock me up. Right? All these things I was doing in this middle in this in this early high school age. And I remember my mother saying, You going to college. Nikki's going to college. And I'm like, I ain't going to college. I bear I don't even have a 2.0 GPA. My ninth grade school year, I had uh I can't remember because I dropped out, but I, I think the second semester was five fails and a C. That's what I had my ninth grade year. Five fails and a C. That was my second. That was my second semester in ninth grade. I dropped out of school completely. I just stopped going. I ditched. I act like I was going to school, but I was floating all over LA on the bus, hanging out with friends. Right. This was me in the ninth grade, and I remember my mother saying, "Nikki's going to college. Nikki's going to college." I'll be looking at her like, woman, are you crazy? I can't even get into a school in the Los Angeles Unified School District. How are you saying I'm going to go to college? Like, I'm dumb. I thought I was dumb, right? So you were known <laughs> in the city? So oh, Chloe is hearing some of this for the first time. But I remember my mother saying I'm going to college. Well, fast forward. The only school that would accept me was Dorsey High School in L.A., right? It was, it was known as one of the darkest, roughest schools in the city. It was very heavily gang populated. A lot of shootings and stuff like that. But it was a really, it was a, actually the best school ever, ever could have been the best school for me, right? Um, I ended up going to Dorsey High. Uh, it was a predominantly African-American and Latino school, right? A lot of gang violence, lots of stuff going on. But we had a staff that loved on us like family. And they actually did become family. And they ended up taking us on college tours and doing all these things with us. But my senior year, I didn't know this, but they set the curriculum up for us to apply to colleges, right? They set the curriculum up for us to apply to colleges. So everything we did for that senior year was all supportive for us to have what we needed for college. And we always got bonus points. Bonus points for um, going to the college fair. Bonus points for filling out a college application. Bonus points for taking the ACT. Bonus points for taking the SAT. Now, mind you, I thought I was too dumb to go to college. So if it was left up to me independently to actually do those things to on my own to apply to college, I would have never done them because in my head, I was not smart enough for college, right? Not to mention my GPA was, I think I was like a 1.9 GPA. I had to work really, 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 really hard to graduate out of high school, right? I mean, I did summer school, winter session. I worked for free in the mall for uh, a couple of semesters to earn credits, to make up for grades. I did everything trying to hurry up and graduate on time, right? And so long story short, our senior year, our staff had put everything in place for us to apply to colleges. They told us, go to the college fair, and for every acceptance letter you get, we're going to um, we're going to give you bonus points. Now, I only cared about the bonus points because I needed the bonus points for the grading class so I can qualify to participate in senior activities, right? I wanted to go to grad night. I wanted to go to prom. I wanted to go to homecoming. I wanted to go, and you have to have a certain GPA to participate in those things. So I did everything that they told us to do because I wanted to participate in all the fun stuff that seniors get to participate in. Well, y'all listen, when it came down towards the end of the school year, I remember all these college letters were coming in from every for everybody, right? People were, they started putting, um, ex, um, they had these little flags that they would put up in the hallway of our department of people with your name and the college that accepted you. And I remember walking down that hallway and saying, man, I wish somebody would accept me for college, but I probably never get into college, right? This was my thinking. So I kept getting rejection letters and stuff like that. But finally, one day, one beautiful sunny day in Los Angeles, California. I remember coming home from school and going to the mailbox and I see a little letter that is from Tuskegee University. Because I had already gotten so many rejection letters, I was expecting it to be a rejection letter. So I was like, here we go, another rejection letter, right? So I go ahead and I open up the envelope and I read the letter and it says, Nicole Smith, I was Smith at the time, Nicole Smith, we are pleased to announce that you have been formally accepted to Tuskegee University for the fall of 1994. And they did say, you've been accepted under academic probation, right? Which meant that I can only take so many classes because I had to prove that I can get the grades to stay in school. But that was the first acceptance letter that I got and the only one 
really until I got to Tuskegee and then Howard University ended up sending me one. But I ended up getting an acceptance letter to go to college, y'all, and guess what? In the fall of 1994, I started college in 1994 uh, at, uh, at uh, Tuskegee University, right? And ended up going on to get my degree in college. And the crazy thing is my first semester at Tuskegee, I actually was on the honor roll. I was on, I made it on the honor roll. It had a 3.1 or 3.2 GPA. And it blew my mind because I had never done that in my high school years, right? So I share that story with y'all because that's just one of many times where in my life, there were things that people would confess and profess over me that I didn't think was possible, but God made possible. Never thought I would go to college. I never thought that I would, you know, leave LA or be able to leave LA and be able to do the things that I've been able to do. But God has a way of bringing them together and allowing all things to work together for your good, where you didn't even know it was possible. And so I share that with y'all because if you look back, Chloe, if you look back, and you think about the times where you've had those God encounters, where things that you never thought was possible start becoming possible in your life, you'll realize that it was all working together in your favor the entire time. Even your mistakes have purpose, y'all. Even your failures have purpose. Even your biggest, dumbest decisions have purpose. Even all the things that you can do to work against yourself has purpose. We may think that we are so jacked up that God is like, I can't do nothing with you. But honestly, the ones who make the stupidest, biggest mistakes are the ones that God loves to use. He may use all of us, but he loves to turn our situation into an impossible, you know, making the impossible possible in those situations because it's so blatant that it had to be God for them to turn out the way that they turned out. Not this one. I think we stated this one before, but we're going to go look at this one and see what it's like. Okay. And so I share that with y'all to say that even our mistakes, even our challenges, even our struggles have purpose. Your labor is not in vain. The things that you're doing is not in vain. You know, I had somebody reach out to me the other day. And this is the kind of stuff that happens to me frequently, right? Where people know what I've done, where I've been, who, who, what I am capable of and what I'm called to do. And people will be like, why did you walk away from such and such? You know, such and such stuck with this and now they're making all this money. And if you would have stuck with it, you would have it too. And people will try to make you feel bad about following what God has called you to follow and doing the things that God has called you to do. But let me tell y'all something. It is nothing more powerful than operating fully under the will of God with the expectation and intention for God to do what he has to do in and through you, even if you don't know what you're doing. Like even if to you, it doesn't make sense because when God can work through you in these situations, the outcome of it far supersedes any human manpower that you could have ever invested to try to recreate those situations that align with the promises of God. I'm going to tell you guys, there are so many days. Um, I told my husband that this morning. I said, some days I wonder, am I delusional because of my level of faith in God? And the truth is, is yeah, sometimes you're going to have to be delusional because if you accept the ways and the things of this world, they're going to make you feel like you have to try to do all these things in your limited human power to force stuff to happen, all for you to realize that a lot of times you're just simply taking the things that God is giving you and you're trying to manufacture factor a counterfeit version of it you're trying to force circumstances that God has promised you that he's going to fulfill but you're trying to do it sometimes without a partnership with God that's what I did before I told somebody the other day we were talking about how many times God had told me to do something and I kind of abandoned God on that thing I said it's almost like going to lunch with somebody and sitting down with them and they share with you a, a vision an idea and they're like, hey, you know, here's some of the things that 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 I really believe we can do, you know, blah, 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 blah. We can do together, right? They might give you an idea and a vision of a thing that you can do with them as a partnership. And it's almost like I walked away from that and I went and took the idea and tried to recreate it on my own, right? Like I stole the idea and tried to do it solo and I failed. That's what it's like to get in partnership with God, to get a vision from God, 
but try to cut God out of it and go try to recreate it in your own life, you know, in your life on your own without the support, the, the partnership and the guidance of the Lord in your life. And we don't understand how exhausting, how draining, how frustrating, how overwhelming it is to live a life without God as the epicenter of everything that you do. But when you flip that thing and when you say, all right, God, I give up because I've been there, right? People come to me all the time. You could be doing this. You could be doing that. You could have this. You should have that. You know, you should have been here by now or you could have been here. Listen, I was there and I know what it's like to be there and do it in a counterfeit way without being in alignment with how God wants to do it in and through you and to wear yourself thin to the point of overwhelm, exhaustion, and depression because you are you are climbing up a ladder to the wrong building and then you're trying to do it in the name of trying to uh, get validation from an audience that has no idea what God has assigned on your life. And so I've had to personally say, God, I, I apologize for or fraudulently trying to recreate this thing, I want to come back to you and have you do it your way. And I've put things in his hand. And I'm going to tell y'all, sometimes moving with God, it, it feels slow. It's like, Lord, come on, you're supposed to be expeditiously, suddenly doing stuff. But God has a way of doing things. He has a way of preparing you, equipping you, positioning you, and aligning you with where you need to be. And then all of a sudden, suddenly, suddenly all the doors will open. Suddenly you'll have exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask a thing. Suddenly everything that you have been praying for is going to come in more. And then boom, 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 boom. It's, I tell people, it's like putting the kernels of popcorn on a fire and all of a sudden everything just starts popping, Right? You have a pop here and a pop there. This is coming together. That's coming together. Everything just starts strategically aligning where all of a sudden everything in your life is popping. And it's this time done in a way where it's completely covered by the will and grace of God that you are there to stay. The ability to be in alignment with that thing to get you to where you need to go is so well connected that you don't have to do all the other things that you were doing when it was all on your own. So anyway, I share that with y'all. Uh, you know, I just feel like a lot of us who are really trying to live for the Lord are getting exhausted because when you're on social media and you're seeing the things that other people are doing, it is very easy to feel like God has forgotten about you. It is very easy to feel like maybe I'm dumb for not following the crowd and not trying to do it the way everybody else is doing it. Maybe I should go back and do it, you know, do what I, I know I can do for the quick, fast, easy, in a hurry type of situation. But God is like, nah, stay still, you know, stay right here. Don't operate in a level of haste. Be faithful, be diligent, be where you're at. I'm going to show you what you need to do. And you do have stuff you got to do. God gives us instructions, but we need to be in alignment with God's will for our life and not feel like he's forgotten about us because he's just simply doing it in a way where when it happens y'all it will far exceedingly supersede anything that we could ever ask or think so what you are doing is not in vain i hope this is encourages y'all but we will definitely um i will continue to just pop on and shoot these little videos when i can and y'all go look up transformation church it's so lit this weekend i wish i was there in tulsa oklahoma but Chloe and I, um, and maybe a couple other people from my church, we're going to go visit it. So go look up I Am Mike Todd. If you guys do not follow him, follow him. And I got to go. We are planning a 12-year-old's birthday party. So we have to go look at some stuff for her party. But hope this encourages you guys. Your labor is not in vain. All right. Talk to y'all soon. Bye.